Welcome to iLecture Online. Now let's see an example of how we deal with time shifting and also we'll compare it to time scaling. Let's do it again. <laughs> All right. Welcome to iLecture Online. Now let's do an example how we implement time scaling. Time shifting. Welcome to Online. Now let's <laughs> Welcome to, <laughs> Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's do an example on time shifting as well as time scaling so we can compare the two to one another. So let's say we have a function f of t. So the Fourier transfer function can, be, can then be represented by this right here. If that's the case, then how do we find the Fourier transform or what will it look like? When we have a time shift like this, when we have a time shift like this, when we have a time scaling, and then we'll combine both the time scaling and the time shifting to see what we end up with. Well, first of all, when we have the time shift like this, we just have to add or multiply the Fourier transform we had before with this right here. So then that means that the Fourier transform in this case, whoop, let's write it like this, will now be equal to, we place in front, e to the minus, j omega, and instead of the t sub naught here, that's the time shift right here, will be a 1, so we pl plug a 1 in there, just put it like that so you can see it, and then we write the rest of the Fourier transform, that would be 5 in the numerator, divided by 2 plus j omega, times 4 plus j omega, so nothing else changes except that in, in additional factor. Now when we have a 2 there, right there, when we shift the time by 2, then the new Fourier transform will look as follows. So we again have e to the minus j omega, but now instead of t being 1, a shift of 1, it'll be now a shift of 2, so we'll put a 2 there. We still have the 5 in the numerator divided by, and the same as before, 2 plus j omega and 4 plus j omega. So that's what we have when we have a time shift. So now we're going to do the time scaling change. So now what we have here is a time scaling and how that affects things when we have it like this, that will effectively become the following. The Fourier transform of that will now be equal to double the numerator divided by, and each of these numbers will double as well. So this now becomes four plus j omega times eight plus j omega, like that. And finally, what happens when we combine them? Now notice here that since we have 2t two, two there, and now we subtract one unit from that, in effect that would be the same as t minus 1 half. So 2t minus 1 or t minus 1 half. So that means that the time shift in this case will only be a half relative to this. And so now the result will look as follows. We will still get the change here, but now the shift will include the following f of omega, the Fourier transform will now be, again we plug this in here, e to the minus j omega, but now relative to the function f of 2t, this becomes 1 half. So we still have the time scaling of the, with the 2t, so then the 5 now becomes a 10. In the denominator we still have the same changes we have over here, this will be 4 plus j omega times 8 plus j omega. So that gives you some nice examples to see how things change when you take the Fourier transform, when you have time shifting, and we have time scaling, and then when you combine the two. So there's some nice examples for you.